Shalom, shalom. Happy Sabbath. Hope everybody's having a peaceful and a restful Sabbath. Shabbat shalom. Uh, before I get started, you know, we just got to stay in order and give all glory, power, and honor to the Most High by the way of his son, who was an instrument of salvation for our nation. That nation would be the nation of Israel that is repeated all throughout the Bible, right? Because we serve the God of who? The God of Israel. This is just going to be an exhortation um, on our jobs or our role as disciples, all right? And it's going to be mainly focusing on um, Pharisees and uh, Sadducees, right? Because I feel like there's a lot of misunderstanding regarding um, the certain sects of Pharisees and Sadducees. Um, we got a lot of Shabbat Shalom. We got a lot of brothers and sisters. They'll make, um, what's the word I want to say? They're, they'll bear false witness on a brother or a sister and call them a Pharisee or a scribe. And I just want to make sure before people make those claims, we know what a Pharisee and a scribe is. And to, you know what I'm saying, clear up all misunderstanding of the two sects. So getting into it right, right away, let's go into the misunderstanding of these two sects. Because I'm led to believe a lot of... Um, a lot of people think that Pharisees and scribes, you know, were totally against Christ or they believe that, you know, a lot of Pharisees and scribes didn't believe in Christ. All right. So, I believe, you know, that's a misunderstanding because the Bible, um, you know, what I'm saying definitely edifies us on the opposite. So we go to Acts chapter 15 and 5. Acts chapter 15 and 5, right? Acts chapter 15 and 5 reads, But there rose up certain of the sect of Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So if we go back, right, it says, But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, right? Right? The only reason why they're having this argument, the only reason why they're before um, this group of people having this argument argument is because they believe they're just trying to get it right. You know what I'm saying? There are certain Pharisees, right, that believed on Christ. All right. <clears throat> so that's, you know, what I'm saying a, a misunderstanding that. A lot of brothers and sisters will say, well, that brother's a Pharisee, that brother, blah, 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 X, Y, and Z. And they try to make it seem like Pharisees are these big evil people. You know, a lot of us um, who claim to call other people Pharisees um, because of other people's actions, a lot of us act like Pharisees without even knowing it. You know what I'm saying? Because um, the Pharisees, you know, they're, they were modern day us, modern day Modern day us, you see what I'm saying? They um, prideful people that thought they knew what they was talk talking about. And they believed. They believed and they believed in what they were preaching. So, you know, they didn't know that they were wrong. For example, take Paul. Paul was a Pharisee. When he was um, slaying Christians or believers of Christ, hey, Paul didn't, you know, he didn't think he was doing anything wrong. All right. Paul thought he was doing something right. And so a lot of people misunderstand Paul's walk as well. Shalom. I, a lot of people misunderstand Paul's walk as well. You know what I'm saying? Because Paul thought he was doing something right according to the most high. He thought he was getting rid of, um, for example, when you look in the book of Numbers, right? There were certain elders that ro rose up. Um, I think his name was Deshaun or Desha. Wait. Dathan and um, the other one starts with a Z, I forgot, but they rose up and the Most High had to deal, deal away with them because they spoke against Moses, right? Paul thought these people was rising up to speak against God, so he was putting them to death. He thought so, and he thought he was doing something right. All right, so a lot of people misunderstand Paul too. He didn't seek to be evil just because he was a Pharisee. Pharisees don't think that, you know what I'm saying, they're wrong. 
if you think about it in any situation where there's a bad guy or a good guy, right? Um, one, both people think they're in the right. I was watching a, a movie on Netflix or a series on Netflix called Cobra Kai. You know, it's kind of like a comedy or a spinoff of a karate kid. And uh, one of the scenes, the dude was like, there's no good guy. There's no bad guy. Both sides think that they're right. It's only winners and losers. But that's true. It's, it's everybody thinks that they're right. If you're doing something, it's not because you think it's evil. Right. And a lot of times we got to um, reason with each other when we're arguing and debating because we none of us want to, you know, have eternal damnation at the end of the day. We just trying to get it right. And sometimes we can let our passion um, overthrow our judgment in an argument or a debate to where we c cut ties with friends and family members. Right. None of us want eternal damnation. We need to understand that first before we start uh, forcing right words to each other and digging a pit for our friend. But um, going on. Right. That was one misunderstanding. Right. So let's go to John 12 and 42. This is the book of John, chapter 12 and 42. The book of John, chapter 12 and verse 42, it reads, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed. So not just a few people believed that was Pharisees and Sadducees. Many of the chief rulers believed on him. They believed on Christ. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Right. So how do we know that these rulers are the Pharisees? Because as we read down, it says because of the Pharisees, the other Pharisees that didn't confess him, they would put the the ones that did believe out the synagogue. So, for example, that would be kind of, you know, what I'm saying um, just uh, us taking heed to the opinions of men too much. A lot of us is afraid to speak the truth because of some of the friends we have or the jobs that we have or, you know, of course, wisdom does take a place in it. But at the same time, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we can't let men shut us up because at the end of the day, he gave us a mouth for a reason, right? He gave us a mind for a reason. And uh, if we deny him, you know, he's going to deny us. So I, I, I wanted to bring that out because, you know, it says many of the chief rulers at that time believed on Christ. Right. I, feel, I believe it was I believe it's a big misunderstanding that a lot of people think that it was um, Christ against the world at that time. And everybody was rejecting him. You know, what I'm saying a lot of the Pharisees, a lot of the Sadducees believed on him. They was just scared. Right. They was trained up by teachers and their teachers told them, hey, look, if you go outside of this you know, we're going to kick you out of the synagogue. And to be in the synagogue was a, it was a, was a, a, a it was a high class thing. You know what I'm saying? It was something to be sought for. It's kind of like you go to school to be a law, um, a lawyer. You finally get that, that seat, right? As a lawyer in a firm and you realize that firm is corrupt, but you can't say nothing. Why? Because they'll kick you out and now all your family thinks you're dumb. All your family thinks you're a failure. You're afraid of those thoughts. So you don't want to, you know, what I'm saying speak up. So that's kind of, you know, what I'm saying what's going on. It's a big misunderstanding. You know, a lot of people believed on Christ. He was famous. Right. Modern day Pharisees. Yeah, we got a lot of modern day Pharisees. And that's kind of why I'm doing this video. Because we do have a lot of modern day Pharisees, but I also want to make sure people aren't bearing false witness when they're calling somebody a Pharisee as well. Right. It's a two way street because um, some brothers is being called Pharisees and people don't really know um, people. People that are calling certain brothers Pharisees don't know that. Hey, look, they're really not Pharisees, but some brothers are Pharisees and, de and deserve to be called Pharisees. But at the end of the day, being a Pharisee does not send you to the to the lake of fire. You feel me? There's a lot of Pharisees that believe. There's a lot of Pharisees that were converted. There was a lot of Pharisees that showed up at his baptism. There's a lot of Pharisees, you know what I'm saying? Paul what, himself was a Pharisee. If you think Paul was the only Pharisee to, con to convert, you're out your mind, all right? So it's not always a bad thing to be a Pharisee. Hear me out. 
we're gonna we're we're gonna get to it. It's, but hear me out. It's not always a bad thing to be a Pharisee because Pharisees were they were knowledgeable. All right, but it's the way you got to go about it. And we finna get into that. All right, just trying to. This is the last precept on uh, one of the misunderstandings. Right. This is John chapter three and verse one. Saint John chapter three and verse one. The book of St. John, chapter three and verse one, it says there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. So a lot of these Pharisees and Sadducees were promoted to high, high um, offices and they were rulers of our people. You know what I'm saying? So to be to be a ruler one day and then kicked to the slums the other day, that was something that was. It was a it, that's that's that was a fear of some people that, you know, uh, became rulers. They didn't want to once they became Pharisees, they didn't want to, you know, what I'm saying be demoted. So a lot of them didn't speak up. You know, what I'm saying a lot of them believed, but they wouldn't they didn't want to speak up. They were like that one servant that hid his talent till Christ came back. Right. I, I receive it, but I'm going to just hide it. I'm going to put it away because I don't want my life to change. We see that a lot of times, too with celebrities, but, um, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's how it was. And, uh, um, I believe in Proverbs, it tells us, you know what I'm saying? A gift destroys the heart, or it might be Ecclesiastes. I think it's Ecclesiastes seven and seven, maybe. Uh, but, um, a gift destroys the heart. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us get nice jobs. A lot of us get nice salaries and nice cars and nice houses, and it destroys our heart, man. We want to hide our talent Right. We want to hide that gift, that that spiritual gift that the most high gave us. And guess what? We put it away. You know, what I'm saying we don't speak up when we're supposed to speak up because we're we're afraid to get that house taken away, that job taken away. Right. We're we're afraid of getting certain things taken away from us. Right. And that's and that a hey, look that you're worthy of being called a Pharisee. So not all the time are Pharisees um, who you think they are. You know, what I'm saying a lot of times we portray traits that are pharmaceutical, right? Some people who don't like to be corrected will call their brethren a Pharisees, right? And that's the thing, you know what I'm saying? Christ never shied away from being corrected from Pharisees because that's what Pharisees were for. Hey, if you don't got Pharisees or judges or, or rulers, right? You're going to have complete chaos. You're going to have people doing whatever they want to do, changing their sex, you know what I'm saying? Uh, being um, into all different type of wickedness, you know what I'm saying? So, Hey, look, you got to be firm in what you believe and how you live your life. And don't be and you can't be afraid of Pharisees in the first place. But just because a brother is correcting you does not mean he's a Pharisee because it tells us in the law. Right. If you love your brother, you will rebuke your brother strongly. You know what I'm saying? And correct him. <clears throat> that don't make you a Pharisee. But even if it did. Right. A lot of misunderstanding is that Pharisees are just evil, terrible people. All right. Because you had some evil, terrible people that were Pharisees and you had some Pharisees like like Paul. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we're going to get into that now after we. So uh, I'll finish reading that. St. John, chapter three and verse one. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus. I'm going to read it as is. The same came to Jesus by night. So, hey, look, he didn't want no. Why would he come by night? Because he didn't want nobody to know he was coming. He didn't want nobody to know that he believed on this man. Because people, guess what, would kick him out the synagogue. He would lose his house, his chief seat. He would lose his show bread. He would lose his priestly duties, right? He didn't want to do that, right? Um, it says, and he said unto him, Rabbi. What does Rabbi mean? Master. So one of the Pharisees is calling Jesus Master, right? And that's a big thing because hey, these Pharisees go through a school, right? These Pharisees go through a hierarchy. They go through tests and they have teachers. They have rabbis. But he's calling Christ rabbi, somebody that never taught him, somebody that never was through his throughout his schooling, right? That's letting you know how strongly some of these Pharisees believed. All right. So when we call them brothers Pharisees or sisters Pharisees or whatever, saying, hey, look, that's a pharmaceutical doctrine. Hey, look, we got to watch what we're saying, because not all the time is a brother or sister a Pharisee and not all the time is a Pharisee a bad thing. All right. I'm not. And hear me out. I'm not saying 
go out and be a bad ferret me be one of these wicked pharisees i'm not saying that but i just want our people to have true understanding of the bible and get christian dogma out of our mind because christian dogma will have us thinking something that's not in the bible you know what i'm saying all right but we finna get into we finna get into all that so um the differences between Pharisees and Sadducees, because Pharisees and Sadducees are two different group of people, right? A lot of people don't know the difference between a Pharisee and a Sadducee. All right, so we finna go over it with um, three, two scriptures, right? Make it quick. Um, let's go to Acts 23 and eight. This is the book of Acts chapter 23 and verse eight. And Shabbat Shalom to those entering the live, right? Hope everybody's having a peaceful, restful Shabbat, all right? Those that keep it, which should be all of us, right? Um, so Acts chapter 23 and verse 8, it reads, For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees com confess both. Right. So here again, we see that the Pharisees, they believe in the resurrection. They believe angels and they believe spirits. Right. But the Sadducees, they don't believe in none of that. So the Sadducees are straight carnal. The Sadducees are those people that say, I, I only believe what I can see. I only believe what I can go through. Right. The Sadducees are those type of people. The Pharisees. Right. They believe everything that they're supposed to believe. They just some of them just didn't believe on Christ. All right. And also some of them were hypocrites. All right. So if you call in a brother a Pharisee, you got to make sure that they, they have the attributes of a Pharisee, man. You can't just be calling a brother a Pharisee because you you're unpleased with how he teaches. You can't call a brother a Pharisee just because you're unpleased with what he's saying to you. Right. That would be bearing false witness. You have to be exact with your charge or with your accusation. All right. And that's why I'm doing this video, because I'm trying to save people from sin. <laughs> right. I'm trying to give you true understanding so you can not sin. Don't bear false witness. All right. So check this out. Um, let's go to Matthew chapter 22 and verse 23. Matthew 22 and verse 23. Right. This is just more on the differences. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 23 reads. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection, and asked him, right? So here again, we see that the Sadducees, they don't believe in a resurrection, right? Meaning they're not going to believe that Christ resurrected in three days, and they're not going to believe that we're going to resurrect, all right? They don't believe in none of that. They're straight carnal people. But the Pharisees, they believe in angels. The Pharisees, they believe, um, they believe in spirits. Pharisees, they believe in the resurrection. And some of the Pharisees, maybe many of the Pharisees, like the book said, believed on Christ. Do the Pharisees believe in water baptism? A lot of the Pharisees showed up to Christ's baptism. Why did they show up to Christ's baptism? Because they believed on him, right? They Some of them came to test him out, but guarantee you Pharisees wanted to get baptized. All right. And if they didn't, it was like because what we read, they didn't want to get kicked out of the synagogue. They were thinking about the opinions of men. But that doesn't mean that they didn't believe in it because Pharisees already believed in the baptism of John. Right. They were just saying, who is the? Why are we getting Why? Why is there a baptism of Christ? There's already a baptism of John. Which one is the true baptism? So they believed in water baptism. They believed in what these two men were doing. They just were challenging Christ. And rightfully so. You know what I'm saying? Pharise all Pharisees were doing throughout the whole Bible was um, examining the whole matter first. You know what I'm saying? Before they could rebuke it. They also tried to say John baptized more than Christ as if they were saying John was holier. Right. So they they equated the water baptism with being holy. Right. Or baptism in general with being holy. So they didn't deny that. Right. So that once again. We have to understand what a Pharisee is and what they did and what they believed, right? <clears throat> Before we call a brother or a sister a Pharisee, 
Now, we have a lot of brothers and sisters that carry on in doctrines of men or traditions of men or um, or doctrines after their own heart. Yeah, but to call them a Pharisee or something, that's bearing false witness on somebody. And, you know, it's not it's not historically accurate. All right. Um, but as we're going on. Right. So. Let's talk about um, the wrong the wrongdoings of both sects, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, right? Let's go to Matthew chapter 16 and verse 12. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 12 reads, Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, right? If you know anything about leaven and bread, leaven is that factor in bread that makes bread rise. Right. So it only takes a little bit of leaven and you put that in your yeast. And guess what? That bread's going to rise. So what is he? Why is he comparing leaven of bread? Well, let's let's finish the scripture first. It says, then understand, then understood they that they bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Right. Edomites call Israel Pharisees today. Yeah, Edomites call other nations or other religions. I'm not even going to say other nations because a lot of our people do too. call um, Israelites, people that have woken up to the truth. They call us Pharisees. Why? Because we know the Bible better than them. And it kind of um, it kind of frightens them that we know the Bible so well Two, They say we use the Bible to condemn and to judge. But the Bible is meant to condemn and, <laughs> and to judge. Right. So. Um, if they want to say we're Pharisees for that, that's cool. Cause fair, Hey, look, somebody has to do it. And the Pharisees, even though some, and we're going to get into the wrong of the Pharisees in a second, but even though there was some wrongdoings of the Pharisees, some leaven in the Pharisees, guess what? Some of the, some of what the Pharisees was doing was lawful. All right. And, um, also some of these religions and other nations call us Pharisees. Because they say that we're legalistic. They say that we, we like the law too much. All we read is the law. But the law is the light. Last time I checked, if you don't have the law, you don't have the light. Means you're in darkness. Means you're in chaos. Means you're free to do whatever you want to do. All right. And we know that's what the Christian church does. We know that's what all these other religions are into. We know that's what these governments are into. Right. Tried to say we put in burdens on people because we telling them not to eat pork no more. Shake my head. Right. So they'll say that, you know, we're Pharisees because we're, we're stopping them from doing their own pleasures. Right. We are pointing out sin and they saying we're Pharisees for that. Now, I'll say this. The Pharisees did point out people's sin. And it, hey, look, we're supposed to point. Isaiah 58 says, cry aloud and spare not and show the house of Jacob. Right. Show his people their sins. So we're supposed to do that. So were the Pharisees wrong for doing that? Pointing out people's sin? No, the Pharisees weren't wrong for doing that. But the Pharisees were wrong for doing that and not looking at the sin in their life. Right. Open rebuke is better than secret love. You know what I'm saying? So they don't know that we're giving them true love by, you know, what I'm saying uh, telling them what they're doing is wrong. So they equate us with Pharisees. But like I said, not everything that the Pharisees did was unlawful or wrong. All right. A lot of it had to do with heart posture and deed. Right. We know that your deeds, your works. Right. Coupled with your faith is what's going to get you saved. And some of the Pharisees works were just not adding up. But we're going to get to that. All right. So this is um, Matthew 16 and 12. Right. I'm going to get to that. Uh, Matthew 16 and 12, then understood they how they that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. So remember what I said, leaven and bread makes it puff up. So why is he comparing that to the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Right. Because as the Bible says, knowledge puffeth up. What does that mean? Your knowledge is going to boost your head. Your knowledge is going to go to your head. You're going to be a big air balloon. Right. Because you're going to think you know everything. You're going to think you can't be wrong. You're going to think that you uh, can belittle everybody, right? You're going to think that your doctrine is true. And when somebody tries to teach you a better way, 
you don't listen to it. You don't hear the whole matter first, right? You shut it down before it even comes out. Right. They're hypocrites, right? So check this out. What is this leaven, right? Let's go over the leaven of each sect. The Sadducees leaven that puffs them up to make them so proud. And let's go over the leaven of the of the Pharisees that puffs them up to make them so proud and why it's bad, right? So let's go to um, Luke chapter. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter 20. And let's hit the... Um, Let's hit the, the leaven of the Sadducees, which we already read it. I don't know if y'all caught it already, but we already read it, right? So Luke chapter 20 and verse 27, it reads, Then came to him certain of the Sadducees, which deny that there is any resurrection. And they asked him, right? So the leaven of the Sadducees is that they deny the resurrection, right? If you off rip denying the resurrection, you deny in Christ because he resurrected. All right. And that's part of his gospel. You got to believe that he resurrected, because if you don't, then you're not going to believe that we're going to resurrect and you're not going to believe that he coming back. You believe that he's dead because you only believe what you see. You're carnal. That's what the Sadducees was wrong for believing it. Right. So that's the leaven of the Sadducees doctrine. Let's go to the leaven of the Pharisees doctrine. Right. Let's go to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew 23. We can start at verse two. Matthew 23 and verse two saying the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses seat. Right. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. Right. Because we were supposed to observe Moses. We were supposed to listen to Moses. Were we not? We were supposed to do what Moses said, because guess what? The most High was talking to Moses. Moses knew the law. Right. If it wasn't for Moses, we wouldn't know what sin was. Because God used Moses to show us what sin was. All right. By giving Moses the law. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. That. Observe and do. But do not ye after their works. For they say and do not. Right. So Pharisees. Like I said earlier. Not everything that the Pharisees said and did was wrong. Actually a lot of it was right. According to the book. A lot of times when they tried to um, charge Christ with something or they brought up um, a problem to Christ and asked how he would solve it or they tried Christ. Right. They was just testing Christ to see if he was real. They, that's all they was doing. And that's what we should do in every aspect of our lives. We sh we're supposed to prove every spirit. We're supposed to try every spirit. And that's what they was doing. They was. They was trying every spirit and that was a mighty spirit in the land. And they they just could not believe it was too good to be true. Right. So what they what, what the Pharisees were doing was not wrong. But the my bad, Salakia, what they were saying was not wrong. Right. All the things pertaining to the law, all the things pertaining to salvation, all the things pertaining to prophets to come was not wrong. They were wrong in their disbelief and they were wrong for being hypocrites. Right. They were being cautious. Right. And they, you know, it's a it's a, you know, for example, right now, think think of yourself as a Pharisee in that time. We know that Christ is coming back because we got this Bible. All right. But but put yourself in that time and pre pretend that you're a Pharisee and somebody came back saying he was Christ. How do you know? It's got to be a super spiritual thing for you to know that that's Christ, because at the time there was multiple ma magicians and sorcerers. At that time, there was multiple people with power. At that time, there was multiple people doing miracles. Right. So how do you know that was Christ? how did how would they know that that was Christ? So can you blame the Pharisees for for being in disbelief? Because you would think. Surely Christ was I didn't think Christ was coming in my time. That's what they're thinking. Like, I, I, I thought he was coming later. Like, I would not have believed that he was coming so soon. Could this really be him? The prophet that Moses spoke about, the prophet that Ezekiel spoke about, the prophet that Isaiah spoke about. I mean, I mean, he's he's crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's. But could this really be him? We got to put ourselves in their shoes and think, man, if I was a Pharisee, would I believe because a lot of us, we, we struggle in faith to this day, right? A lot of, hey, look, the disciples that was with Christ all the time, they struggled in faith, 
right? And they they knew for a fact that was him, but they had to keep being re um they Christ had to keep re, re um repeating himself, and Christ had to keep teaching them stuff to to prove to them like, hey, look, I am that guy. All right. They was making sure he he was who he said he was, right? And nothing's wrong with that. And hey, look, Christ didn't get mad at them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he Christ might have got uh, annoyed a few times, but he always answered them. Christ always stepped up to the plate. He never ran away from them, right? Because he he knew that some of them was gonna wake up. They was doctors of the law, so they had to be more cautious to sign off. On anyone, right? Because whoever they whoever they signed off on, the people was gonna follow, <laughs> right? That's how that's how mighty the high priests and how mighty the Pharisees were. That whoever they signed off on, the people was gonna follow. And a lot of them, they liked their power. They didn't want nobody else to follow any other man besides them, right? So that was a flaw too, which is why which made them hypocritical. But at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? They just, they they wanted to get things right because, hey, look, Paul was crucifying them because that's how serious it was to claim that you was the son of God and to believe in somebody that said that you're the, he's the son of God, right? So uh, Matthew 22, uh, Matthew 22 and verse three, verse four, Salakia, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Right. So if anything, I would say that this right here would be uh, a lot of people say that we're the Pharisees as people that's waking up to the truth. But guess what? Actually, it would be people like T.D. Jakes. Actually, it would be people like these mega church pastors. Why? Because they put these heavy burdens on people. What is the heavy burden that the people putting on people? Just believe and give your money. Right. While I'm wearing this Burberry sweater. While I'm wearing these Gucci shoes, while while I'm flying in my jet and you struggling to pay your rent, right? If you keep struggling to pay your rent and, and paying me, God's going to bless you. That's a heavy burden, man. I mean, we got to have faith, but you put in a heavy burden on somebody because guess what you're not doing? It says It says they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders, right? But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. They don't, you know what I'm saying, pay for people's mortgages. They don't give people cars. They don't help people that's in poverty, right? They they benefit off of those people. So they would be they could be called Pharisees as well, you know what I'm saying? And let's keep reading. But all their works they do for to be seen of men, right? And a lot of us, even in the truth, like I said, that leaven, right? It'll puff you up in pride and you want to do everything just to be viewed by men. Social media is a dangerous street. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of brothers uh, who only do stuff for the views in the world and in the truth. Right. Only do stuff for the views. Right. They can't come together for the greater good. Right. They won't talk to so and so. They won't they won't hash things out in private. Everything got to be in front of everybody. You know what I'm saying? Those would be what you call Pharisees as well. Um. But all their works they do to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. Right? They wear fancy clothes. All right. Verse six. And love the uppermost rooms of the feast and the chief seats in the synagogues. They like being the, the people that they become. They like those new titles. In the world, they was nobodies, but now they came into this truth and made them something. Even when we see five percenters, it made them something. Or people that's in the Kemen and Egyptology, it made them something. They was a nobody in the world. Now they have five wives and, and the girls calling them God. And they're calling the girls God, right? A lot of people feed off of that because it's nothing but vanity. Not knowing that we're nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're nothing. All right. All of us is on the same playing field. You know what I'm saying? We're serving one. But they let that puff them up in pride. You know what I'm saying? Those people could be called Pharisees and have doctrine. You know what I'm saying? That's uh, leaven that puffs them up. All right. So moving on, let's go to um, let's go to our jobs now. Right. We're finna close out in a second, but let's go to our jobs as disciples. Right. 
Pharisee, hey, look, Paul was a disciple and he was a Pharisee. All right. But but he was a disciple. So let's go to our job as disciples. Right. Let's get some wisdom. Matthew chapter five and verse 20. <clears throat> This is the book of Matthew, chapter five and verse number 20. And they straightway left their nets. Salakia, that's not it. That's the act of faith, though. I'm going to read that real quick. That's off topic, but I love that. Uh, Matthew four and 20. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And hey, look, a lot of people, hey, look, and that goes into what I'm going to go into anyway. Disciples, we're disciples. These are disciples right here. You know, when he came to them and said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men in verse 19, it says what? It says they straightway left their nets and followed him. Now, when it says they straightway left their nets, that's nothing. That's not a small matter. Their nets represent their life. Their nets represent their family, their kids. They had to leave those things behind their job. How they how they family is going to have food and, and water if they if the man of the house is no longer a fisherman, he no longer and he's no longer around, right? A lot of our women today would hate for their men to be on the road 24 seven, right? Following some guy that says he's the son of God, right? A lot of our women today wouldn't let that fly. A lot of our men wouldn't do that. A lot of our men love their women so much, they would not leave their women for more than one day. Love their kids so much, you know, they, wouldn't, they couldn't fathom leaving their kid. So when it says drop their nets right here, it's not just talking about a fishing net. It's talking about their whole livelihood. All right. And that and that lets you know it's spiritual because the Pharisees had to keep trying this, man. These people straightway drop their nets because why? His sheep hear his voice and some of the sheep just don't comprehend. It says, hey, look, lightness, the darkness does not comprehend. That's what the Bible says. Some people just won't get it and some people will get it because it's a spiritual thing. All right. And as disciples, we got to be spiritual people. We can't be like the Sadducees and be carnal. All right. So let me go to uh, what I was actually going to Matthew five and verse 20. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So what does that mean? It sounds like to me that Christ just said that the Pharisees are righteous. All right. But we got to be more righteous. But that doesn't mean that the Pharisees aren't righteous. This is why this is why Christ even put up with the Pharisees, because he understood they had a level of righteousness. They just didn't have um, true understanding. All right. So I'm going to read that one more time. Matthew five and twenty four. I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So you got to be more righteous, right? Right. They're not ready to give up their seats. Um, let's let's move on real quick. Um, let's go to Psalms 119 and 99. Psalms 119 and 99, because we got to exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees and the importance of that is what the the Pharisees taught us the law. The Pharisees were judges and rulers at that time to make sure that the Jews stayed in order, make sure our nation stayed in order. Right. They were our teachers. All right. Like the brother said earlier, they were doctors of the law. So we have to what we have to exceed our teachers. Right. So that's why we're going to Psalms chapter 119 and 99. The book of Psalms chapter 119 in verse 99 reads, I have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation, right? When your testimonies, Shalom, Shabbat, Shalom, ah, but uh, when your testimonies are your meditation, guess what? You're going to exceed your teachers because a lot of times, even in the, even in the uh, education field today, a lot of these teachers are stupid. A lot of these teachers can barely pass the Gates test to even be able to teach because they don't have no understanding. They can't apply it to their life, which is why a lot of them are teachers because they couldn't go nowhere else in life. They didn't want to be teachers. You think they grew up wanting to be teachers? No, they didn't. 
So guess what? A lot of teachers don't have understanding of the things that they're being taught. They don't know how to apply it to a job, right? They just know how to pass a test, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they have no understanding. And so a lot of the Pharisees, they knew how to pass a test to get that title, right? But what was wrong? They had no understanding. So that's why he said, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees. It's righteous to get a passing grade, but it's more righteous to get that passing grade and get a job with that passing grade, right? In the world, so to speak, if you can follow me. All right. So it says Psalms 119 and 99. I'll read it one more time. I have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation. The only way you get that understanding is if you're daily meditating in this Bible, right? Daily meditating in these law, statutes and commandments, not with Buddhism and humming and repeating phrases and yoga, right? With with these words, man, these words are life. This law is, is spiritual, right? No wherewithal, right? They have they have no wherewithal, as the brother just said. All right, so let's go to also Sirach chapter twenty one. Sirach chapter twenty one. Sirach chapter twenty one and uh, fifteen. Sirach twenty one and fifteen, and it reads. If a skillful man hear a wise word, he will commend it and add unto it. But as soon as one of no understanding heareth it, it displeases him and he casteth it behind his back. So let's let's break this down. Knowledge is nothing to a man who cannot reason with men. Right. Even Solomon said in the wisdom and wisdom of Solomon that when he was young, he was witty. He was witty with his words before he even got understanding. You got to be witty. You got And to be witty, you have to understand what you're talking about. You got to know how to go into different avenues, right? The brothers on here, um, Danal and uh, Yeshaya, right? The brothers on here, when we're out in camp, they look, they're skilled in going into rabbit holes with people, right? Because when people come up, you don't know what they're going to say. You're not going to know the questions they're going to ask, but you got to be able to tie this back into the word, man. And that's how you know that you understand what you're talking about. So check this out. Um, so Rack chapter 21 and 15. If a skillful man hear a wise word, right? You know, in the world, there's many things you can be skillful at, but being skilled in this law is something that all the men that all the men and women in this book that you read about, they were skillful in this law. Even the kings, right? The kings always, if you read through first Kings, second Kings, first Chronicles, second Chronicles, it was always a time where they said, bring me the book. I want to read it. Right. And they would just be reading it and they'll say, oh, we're supposed to be doing this or, oh, uh, so-and-so did this for me. Well, we got to do something about it. Is this true? Did this really happen? They was always meditating in the law as kings. Now, as kings, they could be doing anything, but they delighted in the law because they knew that the most high made them king. And without the most high, guess what? They wouldn't be sitting in that seat. All right. So you got to be skillful. If a skillful man hear a wise word, he will commend it. Right. Say, hey, look, that is true. And add unto it. What is he adding unto it? Con Chronicles is a long book, but hey, look, you know what I'm saying? And the water, um, you know what I'm saying? All I got to say is that is Job 32 and 8. Job 32 and 8 says, this is a spirit inside a man that inspires him, right? And that spirit is the word of God or the spirit of God, you know what I'm saying? So that's not me teaching, it's the spirit teaching. And we can all have that spiritual gift if we let the spirit come in, you know what I'm saying, and teach. But... um. Ecclesiasticus 21 and 15, if a skillful man hear a wise word, he will commend it and add unto it. What is he adding unto it? Right. The next part of that verse is telling us what he's adding unto that wise word. Right. It says, but as soon as one of no understanding heareth it. Right. So what are we adding to it? We're adding um, understanding to a wise word. So that's why he says our righteousness has to exceed that of the Pharisees, because if the Pharisees is telling us a wise word, but we as disciples have to add understanding to it. All right. But somebody with no understanding heareth it and it displeases him like some of the Pharisees did, like some of the Sadducees did, like some of the scribes did, like some of the high priests did, like Nicodemus and them. Right. 
it deplete it displeased them because it wasn't something that they wanted to hear. And they saw in the future how their kingdom was coming to an end, meaning, hey, look, another man mightier than me is going to take this throne. So they had to take him out. Right. Man of no understanding hear it that it displeases him and he cast it behind his back. All right. So that's why we have to exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, because some of the Pharisees, they they heard it. It displeased them that they might. If I believe this, I'll get kicked out of my seat. If I if I believe this, I can't come to the synagogue no more on the Sabbath day. If I believe this, you know, my wife, she's going to think I'm a failure and she's going to think I'm crazy. If I believe this, you know, Saul, he's going to crucify me. Right. A lot of them, it displeased them to hear the truth, even if they believed it. Right. And they cast it behind their back because they had no understanding. Why? Because they had the they didn't have the, the knowledge of the spiritual part of it all like the disciples. But as disciples, we have to have the spiritual part of it all. Right. And we have to follow in spirit and in truth. You know what I'm saying? So um, this is going to be my closing scripture. Right. My closing scripture is going to be Sarah chapter Sirach or Ecclesiasticus chapter 37, right? 37 and 19. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 37 and 19, right? And it reads, There is one that is wise and teaches many and yet is unprofitable to himself. All right? There is one that's wise and teaches many, right? You could have a, you could have a wise word out your mouth and you could teach many. Right. But you're unprofitable to yourself. Why? Because you have no understanding. You don't know how to apply it to life. You don't know how to plant that seed and make it grow. Right. You know, everything there is about a seed. You know, everything it is about the garden and the, and the, and the fruit. You know, you're on YouTube all the time looking up um, videos on it. But when it comes down to actually gardening, guess what? You don't know how to do it. Every time you try to do it, it gets infested with bugs. And infected and, and your plants are always dying every time you try to do it you can't ever get something to grow there's a there's somebody that's wise in many areas this wise in one area two areas three areas but guess what they're unprofitable to themselves so guess what what i'm saying is as disciples don't worry about being a pharisee don't worry about um you know what i'm saying whether whether somebody's doing their job or not you just worry about you you know what I'm saying? And if somebody comes and tries you, you stand up like a man or a woman. You answer them just like Christ did. Right. If, if somebody um, if you if you face with an obstacle and somebody is teaching you something and even though it's something you don't want to hear as a disciple, you have to be able to receive it. You know what I'm saying? If it's true, you have to be able to receive it and be skillful and add unto it. You got to add that understanding to it, even though you don't like what they're saying. But according to the Bible, if it's right, guess what? Got to chop it up to what it is and add unto it and you'll be better than your teacher. All right. So uh, I hope that helped a lot of people. I just went over, you know what I'm saying? The misunderstandings of the Pharisees and Sadducees, uh, uh, the definition of both Pharisees and Sadducees, um, the faults and the leaven of each doctrine of being a Pharisee and a Sadducee and also our job. You know what I'm saying? Whether you're a Pharisee yourself right now and you're a doctor in the law and you try everything. Hey, look, you could be a Pharisee, but you got to be like Paul. You know what I'm saying? Did any of the Pharisees see Christ do a miracle? Right. All the Pharisees saw Christ do miracles and they heard about it. That's why it says many of them believed. Even chief rulers believed. Right. But a lot of them wouldn't confess because. They were ashamed of what was going to happen to them. All right. Like a fat fitness coach, right? A lot of, you know, like the fat fitness coach, he could be a Pharisee. Listen to him because he might know a lot. But hey, look, don't do what he does because you'll be fat. All right. And uh, yeah. And they accused him of healing on the Sabbath, right? They knew that he was healing on the Sabbath. You know what I'm saying? So they, they saw him healing people on the Sabbath, performing miracles. And guess what? They, they accused him of a, a crime they was testing him and he he showed them he didn't back down he showed them where he could do so in the law with three witnesses right he gave them david he gave them um <clears throat> he gave them david um when david was running away for those three days he gave them um the the, Le the Levit levitical priest and he also gave them um <clears throat> 
somebody else. It slips my mind right now. But he gave them three. He gave them three witnesses and then said, guess what? I'm Lord of the Sabbath day. And the Christians take that Lord of the Sabbath day, meaning that he is a Sabbath. But he said he's the Lord of it, not that he is. Do as I say, not as I do. Right. And a lot of a lot of parents are sad, uh, are Pharisees. Right. Because they tell their kids to do what they what they what they want them to do, but they don't do it. Right. As as parents, you know, what I'm saying we got to be like how the most high is to us. The most high keep his law. He bound to his word. He don't repent from nothing. He's not a man that he should lie. He don't lie to us. You know what I'm saying? And the most high operates within the law that he put in place. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, look, that's how you become a righteous judge. So with that, I'm going to say Shabbat Shalom. Hope everybody's having a good Sabbath day. Um, hope everybody has a good Sabbath day tomorrow when you wake up. <clears throat> don't cuss. But be cussing up a storm, right? Yeah, parents say that. Uh, Sirach chapter 21 and 26. The heart of fools is in their mouth, but the mouth of the wise is in their heart, right? Once again, being spiritual and being carnal, right? And you, if you got that leaven in you, that pride is going to make you speak folly. Because there's, hey, look, there's a lot of power in your tongue. But guess what? If you have that spirit in you, your heart is where all your wisdom, your mind Right. It's going to be your mind is going to tell you what things really mean, uh, because somebody can say something, but not all people can discern the intent behind what was said. All right. So, hey, look, this was a great class. Y'all was teaching me stuff. You feel me? Um, but yeah, Shabbat Shalom. Uh, hope everybody has a good Sabbath day. Y'all stay safe. Y'all stay restful. Uh, Shalom.